you have to go back to that stuff after the research. Mm -hmm. So that is just like the design team inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then you still need, of course, the knowledge about, so what shape is the same in my typeface, or what should I make the same to make it not irrational, and what can be different, and things like this. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, it would be cool if not everyone would make uh, a book typeface that uh, is based on a old style model or something. Um, but, um, yeah, sometimes I find you could be a little bit more particular or flavorful in, in the designs. And I'm not meaning now constructed modular fonts that also all look the same, but I, I don't think that's what you're not going to do that. Unless you want to make a typeface for a club or a band or something, then it could be appropriate, of course. Um, my point is that um, uh, like typefaces have um, Um, if the user is a graphic designer, they might choose the typeface exactly for that reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if someone like just the consumer is walking through the supermarket, yeah. Yeah. they just maybe think like, oh, this is like this is something that appeals to me. Uh, maybe they think like, oh, this looks delicious or mm -hmm. I don't know, cheap. That's also something that you might use a typeface for packaging to say this is a cheap product, you should buy this and or you want to make something fanciful and, and more uh, it looks more quality or high quality than it actually is also and you can go in all kinds of direction. But then you get a lot of graphic design and typography into this. So this is not only typeface, but of course you all have the sense of this is a an expensive looking typeface, not not the font itself, but um, this looks classy, this looks more expensive, and this looks everyday, cheap, um, and basic. So um, if you have a particular use in mind, you can also design that kind of style of a typeface. But that's more like that we, we connect certain genres and uh, classifications of typeface with certain like these atmospheric values that I just talked about because they're just used this way all the time throughout history. So this is like what what the collective use of that typeface uh, just built into that font that uh, classy Dido looks more expensive than Putica or Helvetica or something mm -hmm. super cheap. Um, I have um, an experience uh, 10 years ago on, in the street of Paris for a TV channel. So the TV channel wanted to know what his type design and everything, and, and I suggest that they have to go in, on the street, in the street and to, to have printed a very, uh, very different kind of style of typeface with always the same word. The word was Georges, but uh, it was, there was a fracture, there was something like Greek style, it was Litos probably, there, is, there was a script, there was a Dido, there was a sans serif, uh, few things. And um, on the street, they asked people on what, what they, they, it was black, black on white, nothing else. And they asked people on the street what they think of the typeface, what they, what they think about when they see the typeface, these words. And it was very clear that the people, for very basic, very oversimplified system, that the Dido, for example, they have seen men wears. So you can see immediately, or, or fashion magazine, immediately they spot the thing. The Greek, they say, yes, uh, Greek yogurt. Because the type, it was not, say, feta or whatever, it was a George. But they have seen without color, without uh, illustration, without photo, just the shape immediately brings them in certain universe. So it works. The shape brings something on tells something to the customer, but uh, very basic, uh, not subtle as we want, but still there is something happening. It's difficult to know exactly, but 
The basic thing works. The message works through the, the shape only. And a lot of people could not explain this. Like this uh, normal, people don't know yeah. what's happening there. But you have to keep that in mind if you're a, a designer, and you can also, of course, play with this in the sense that you make something completely different, but you have to know that people have certain associations then with the typeface, and then it gets either subversive that you use a Greek yogurt for a French magazine or something, like then then you play with this contrast or, or something like this. But also sometimes as a designer I feel there are conflicts because like in in terms of the fact that there are trends. So like people tend to like you know say over a particular period of time just prefer certain things over certain things to do suggestion and so on. Yeah, I mean that is of, of course this usage that um, the technique is used for a particular thing yeah. that is also changing over yeah. history. For instance, John Kosova mentioned that all the computer companies are using the same typeface right now. Yeah. That was a different typeface, maybe. 30 years ago, but now if you say thin myriad on white, you think, I don't know, Apple or whatever, and maybe in 20 years that typeface is branded by a different iconic use. So that can change, of course, but um, uh, I hope you all have a, like, do you all have a graphic design background or you also use type a lot? Because I think this is, this is really helping if you design a typeface that you also use typefaces before that a lot because then you know from from your work what you what you looked at or why you chose a typeface over another one and then now you know the features that you maybe have to keep in mind or something. So sometimes I think that a good typeface designer is also a good user of typefaces or as to be a typographer to really understand them. Is there some style that if we were to choose or go that, that direction, we would learn more from versus another style? To, to draw a style? To to, yeah, to even just, uh, just kind of, um, even when we're creating our typeface, if we go down one route, we would learn more versus if we stuck to something that was like maybe like a sans or something. Well, if you, the sans errors are not so easy, but if you are not working on a very modular, geometric mm -hmm. typeface, then you probably learn more because you have to draw many more different shapes. Mm -hmm. If you draw something that is this very build-up of simple forms, then that's quicker, maybe. But then that doesn't really give you a, a, a good basis for the full form potential that might be out there. I don't, I don't mean that it has to be totally quirky and asymmetric and like all kinds of different details. But um, something other than a geometric sans serif is probably just more interesting to draw. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, to realize that you are here to learn the process, how to, how to design a typeface, mm -hmm. rather than to design the perfect typeface for this particular job. Yeah. Boring typeface, you, can, you will do a lot in, your, in the future. Yeah. So, because clients want you know, another myriad or whatever. Yeah. And you will struggle to try to push people to don't do that. I've done six months discussion to have an angle on the E for the Nespresso typeface. Six months discussion to have the diagonal E, just imagine. There is few features that I lost uh, my, my battle. But, but here, it's more what you have to learn is the process, yeah. how to draw typeface. So more you have a lot of elements, more you will learn how to deal with all these elements. Yeah. At the end, the typeface will probably be similar to many typefaces designed by people in course similar to this one. But, but it's your first typeface, and it's a typeface where, with, with, uh, is the one uh, who helped you to, to learn how to design typeface. Mm -hmm. After, you don't have to publish it, or perhaps it would be nice. But no, you, I, I, I won't forget about this for now. Just try, to, try to learn as yes. much with this typeface. Yeah. Don't think about, I want to release this later on. No, no. It's, it's don't have to be released afterwards. And exactly my yeah. point, I agree completely with, with that. But more you are open with this idea of to do something, we have a lot of things to learn. It's a process that you will learn now. It's not, 
the most beautiful uh, typeface you will do. It's a typeface as a tool to to understand what what you can do is shape. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and try then to maybe not fill out the full character set, but rather um, try to draw the extremes so that you can have maybe what would be the blackest day cut of this look like, and what is the more toned down light one, and what could be a condensed here and then expanded also. So that you try, almost like try the, the, the extremes in proportions and in, in drawing, and then you can either interpolate or you can imagine the rest. But then you have some, you, you looked into how to draw a condensed for someone helping you, and you looked into what is different if you have an expanded or a display cut. And um, the, the normal style, will, yeah, you need this as a basis, but then, um, like from the normal, maybe try the extreme versions as well, and then not the ages. Yeah. We will do that uh, next week with. Uh on the, on the Monday, we will uh, do some exploration to see if an idea that you have with the low contrast, certain kind of serif or balls, terminals, what will happen if you have to do uh, high contrast, black, to see if the concept still working. Mm -hmm. So to, 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 to take, to, to see to, if the, an idea is still working when it's very different, in a very different situation. To help you to take the right decision, and not just to say I want this F exactly like that, but this shape have to be on the R. On this is what we're doing right now. But after we'll do it with um, weight, contrast, uh, condense, uh, wide, whatever, a lot of different things. Yeah, it's good to do this pretty early in the yeah. process because if if you have drawn everything for four weeks and then you test that and it looks shitty, then um, you want to change. Like it's, it's good to do this in the second week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So does anyone have a, um, a use or a medium in mind for the typeface? Not like culture is at the bottomless pit and style, but does anyone want to do a, I don't know, a newspaper typeface or? For, for your boutique project, uh, typeface, you have to look at already what is and what kind of shop it is. Right. And also look at, uh, like you can do in graphic design, uh, in graphic design, what, what kind of style uh, competitor use on this kind of product or on based on that, depending on the country, and try to do something little different. And, and then you have a brief, you can, on, on based on this brief, you you can stick to that or try to do something different, completely different. But to have in mind that you do that in reaction against the style, but you have you need to have the the clear view of what happened, not just uh, you're now saying yes, it's probably something like that. You really have to put down all the elements who formalize clearly the style of this, this kind of things. Yeah, I think that in such a uh, brief or there would style be, would be the majority, like the, the most important thing, and legibility is for, for one time, or things like this, yeah. or of production, that's, that's not so, like all these party Google limitations are not so important for that, but you have to go for the flavor and the association and the atmosphere. Even for a shop, sometimes uh, they say, yes, we have a typeface we use for 
advertising display on the web on, and suddenly at the end of the project they say we want to have your typeface on your ticket from the the, the cashier the, the yeah. when you buy and suddenly what uh, what what is uh, i don't know we have to put the type but they have a tool who have 30 years old even it's a very big shop they have 2,000 of them, they are not able to change the printer and suddenly you have to do something like in Windows 95 or something or even bitmap say, but it doesn't work, we have to do something new, we have the style of, so we, st we start something new, just for that, to say merci pour votre passage, thank you to, to, to shop on the shop or whatever, so yeah. There is always a technical who appear at unexpected, uh, you know, for next week. One year you work on next, yes, next week we, we want to have that on every ticket. The boss say we want to have the typeface on every ticket. It's too late, guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Is it possible for text typefaces to work? Uh, not necessarily as display uh, typefaces because they're not the same, but um, because I've seen typefaces that look and they work perfectly as body text, but when you put them real big, they still have these micro aesthetic elements and they're really interesting. And in some cases, I think they work as. There is one example is Officina uh, by. Uh by Eric Spickerman on, on just Tom Rossum who, who drew for, it, for him. He, he, when they, re, they have done the redesign of The Economist, Officina, they have done a, a display version of it. So they remove every wrong, wrongish effect, all the angle, on, so to, to have the thing more simple for display. Because it was nice in small, so, small size, Officina was more at the time where they wanted to have something for fax, for low resolution thing, but in big, it's it's not it's too nice, it's too curvy, it's too delicate. There is too much uh, small thing happening everywhere. So more more nice, more more calm. So they they done that. Even the new typeface from Offler uh, yesterday, the Verlag, is that the Verlag? The Whitney, Whitney condensed. There is a feature when you don't have the, uh, the diagonal, uh, the, the diagonal are flat, not angular, because it's condensed. Uh, so it's used on display, uh, on, when it's used in display, the diagonal are probably too much. When with Nate small, large, it works well, but with narrow proportion, the angle on the V are a little too much, they have, they have the alternates. The stylistic set, they probably say, yeah, it's nice, but it's too much. We have to have the, the more calm down version. It's exactly an answer to that. Okay. Yesterday, <laughs> decision. What did you mean that uh, people made like built-in tracks into them and then get so fond of it that they use it for very really large and then they have the, I don't know, like the chunky details in the, in the fonts? Yeah. I'm not here, maybe. Um, yeah, that happens quite a bit, I think. But um, usually the spacing is much too wide, and you just blow up a small, a, a typeface for small. But these interesting details that you, like some.